All right, this is me just doing a quick uh, solution of um, the exam to review-ish uh, problems that we did in class. Um, I'll just go through it relatively quickly. Uh, so um, uh, in the first part of the problem, we have a car on a slope. Uh, let's actually do it the other way because I want my... Okay. There's a car on a slope. Um, it's on wet concrete. Uh, wet concrete is important because the static coefficient of friction of wet concrete is 0 0.7. The kinetic coefficient of friction is 0 0.5. Um, <coughs> and I'm asking basically, um, so it's, it's barely being held there by friction. Uh, and so I'm asking what is the um, what is the coefficient set of it, uh, sorry, what is, the, um, what is the angle of this slope? So we're trying to find what the state is. Um, if we do a free body diagram of this car, we have gravity, we have the normal force, um, and then we have friction kind of holding it up. And uh, I had questions before about what direction the force of static friction goes in. So that, the, the way you can tell what direction the force of static friction goes in is get rid of the friction and see which direction the the, um, the object would go in. In this case, if we get rid of the friction, of course, the, the car would, would slide down the hill. Um, so in this case, uh, the, the friction is, is keeping it up there but pushing up the hill. Um, we're going to use uh, kind of our normal coordinate system for things that are angled in that we're going to use something like this, or X and Y is like that. Um, so when we're trying to find this angle of slope, nothing's moving, energy won't work because um, nothing's moving, there's no real energy change happening. So we see that this is going to be a force type of problem. Um, so let's go ahead and just draw our do our sum of forces in the y direction first. Um, again, we're going to have to do our normal thing of um, we're going to split our forces into FGY and FGX. Um, and this is that same theta. Uh, this this is that that the same theta is that theta. Those are the same angles. Um, and so we find that, um, so that in the y direction, we just have n minus fgy is equal to 0. Again, it's not accelerating in the y direction. Or that the normal force is equal to fgy. Um, and fgy is just equal to mg. And then it's going to be that cosine of that angle, um, which you can see if you look at that diagram and you remember your, um, uh, your trig. All right, so that's kind of the end of that. That's, uh, that's as much as we can do in the y direction. We're going to do the x direction, and we find that the force of friction, um, which is going in the negative x direction, plus fgx, oops, fgx is also equal to 0. Again, the thing isn't sliding at all yet. Um, and so we get that fgx is equal to the force of friction. Um, or mg, uh, that's going to be the sine of theta, is equal to mu static, because it's not moving, times the normal force. Oops. Um, now, we actually already have the normal force, which is right here. Um, we've already solved for that. And so we're going to plug it in. And so you get mg sine of theta is equal to mu static, and then I'm just going to plug in the normal force from above and just plug in mg cosine of theta. Okay, so now that we have that in there, we can start canceling things out. The masses cancel out. G cancels out. Turns out this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how heavy the car is or even whether we're on the earth. Um, and you just get the, um, uh, we're trying to find uh, the angle, you get sine theta divided by cosine of theta is equal to mu s. And this would be a little difficult because we have two angles, but for those of you who remember, sine theta over cosine theta is just equal to the tangent of theta. So we just get tangent of theta is equal to mu s, or theta is equal to um, the inverse tangent of mu s. 
And if I go ahead and plug um, my number in from above, which is that um, US is equal to 0 0.7, I just take the inverse tangent of, um, of 0.7 and I get that this angle is 35 degrees. All right, um, so there you go. So that's the first part. Um, now let's, uh, we'll use this little section here to do part B. All right, now for part B, it says somebody bumps into the car and starts sliding down the hill, so the hill is 30 meters long. So again, oops, uh, if this distance is 30 meters, um, how fast is the car going at the bottom of the hill? Um, uh, and we're going to uh, we're going to need we're going to we're asked to use energy for this. With energy, we always have energy initial is equal to the energy final, or mg h initial plus one half mv squared initial. And we also are going to need work because there's going to be friction that goes in here. So plus work non-conserved is equal to mg h final plus one half mv final squared. Okay, um, now we're gonna do a couple things. First of all, I'm going to set the bottom of the hill. I'm gonna call that um, h is equal to zero. All right, so we're gonna call that zero height. All right, so at the end of sliding, this thing's going to have no height. All right, because it's going to slide to the bottom of the hill. At the bottom of the hill, it doesn't have any height. Um, at the beginning, it's not moving at the beginning when someone bumps into it, so our initial velocity is zero. Okay, um, let me be a little more careful with that. It's initial velocity at zero. So that's going to make that whole term zero. Um, so we get rid we've gotten rid of two terms. Now we just have mgh initial. Plus work not conserved. Now work is always equal to force times distance times the cosine of the angle between this. In this case, the the force that's acting on it is the is the friction. The friction is what's slowing it down. That's what we have to account for. So we're going to get the force of friction. We're going to get the distance that the thing traveled. All right, and we're going to get the cosine of the angle between the force and the distance. Of course, the angle between them. Again, it's the normal thing where the force is pointing up the hill. The distance is going down the hill, and so this angle is going to be 180 degrees. And that's just going to equal one half the mass times the final velocity squared. Okay? Um, so we have to do um, a couple of things. First of all, we need to find this uh, this height. Before we do that though, let's just do one more. Let's do one more thing. We also can write down what that force of friction is. The force of friction is just equal to mu. Alright, now it's the kinetic friction times the normal force, all right, force of friction is always mu k, mu times n, times the distance, times cosine of 180. Let's go ahead and just put in, cosine of 180 is just a minus one, so we'll just put in a minus there, and one half mv final squared, okay? Uh, um, so there we go. Uh, that's the whole, the whole thing. Um, and of course, we have the normal force from before uh, when we solve for that in part A. Okay. Um, so, let's look at that height. That height we have to get basically by doing some trig. So, uh, if we look at this, this height here, um, if you remember your trig, this is just going to equal um, uh, 30, oops. 30, time, 30 meters times sine of theta, which is 35 degrees. So we get mg times 30 sine of 35. So that was our angle that we found from before. Minus mu k, mu k is just 0 0.5. Um, again, this is kinetic friction now since it's moving. Um, N we found from before is equal to mg cosine theta. And again, that's 35 degrees. Um, the distance is just at 30 meters. That's just the total distance that's traveled, all right, from the top to the bottom. Minus one half mass 
times the velocity final squared, which is what we're trying to find. Okay? One nice thing, the masses cancel out everywhere. So there's a mass, there's a mass, there's a mass. It's in every term. We can only cancel things out if it's in every term. You notice G is not in that last term, so we can't cancel out G. Also, this is an equal sign out of minus. Okay? Um, we can just multiply uh, by 2 everywhere. So we can, um, if we multiply this by 2, that by 2 all terms, then we get 2G times 30 sine of 35 degrees minus 2 times 0 0.5 is just 1. So we get minus G cosine of 35 degrees is equal to V final squared. And we just need to take the square root of both sides to get V final. We can go ahead and plug that in, and hopefully uh, all my numbers are correct. Um, 2 times 9.8 times 30 times sine of 35 minus 9.8 times cosine of 35. And take the square root of that whole thing, and then you get that's going to be going V final is equal to 18 meters per second, which sounds reasonable. You know, it's like 35 miles an hour. So, okay. So now we got our V final. Now what are we asked? We're sit we're told at the bottom of the hill the ground is flat. How far does the car go before stopping? Okay. So now. Um, now, let's think about what's happening. Let's just draw another quick picture. We're basically just having a car on a flat road going at some speed and then eventually stops. So this is initial, this is final. We can just do this by energy. Energy initial is equal to energy final. Again, we have, um, we have kinetic energy at the beginning. Um, we're going to, I'm just going to call you know, where the car starts out and where it ends, um, h equals zero. So we, we, we never have any potential energy, okay? Um, we do have to account for the fact that we're going to have friction, so then we, need, we still need the work non-conserved. And then at the end, at the end, we don't have any velocity, right? So the whole point is that we're stopping. So there's no kinetic energy, there's no work, there's no anything. So we just have that's equal to zero. Or the other way to think about that is that if we have one half mv initial squared, where I can go ahead and plug in, we've got um, the force of friction. All right, we've got d again. The the distance, uh, the um, the uh, the the angle between the two of them is 180 degrees because they're going in opposite directions. So we can just turn this into a minus sign. That's equal to zero. Or we have one half mv squared is equal to the force of friction times d. All right. And um, I can uh, go ahead and plug in the force of friction on f mv squared is equal to mu uh, kinetic friction, because it's sliding, times the normal force times d. Now, of course, in this case, if we do a quick free body diagram, all right, um, of uh, I'll do this over here. If we do a quick free body diagram of the car now, since it's on a flat road, you have mg of the force of gravity going down, you have the normal force going up, you have the force of friction going to the left. Um, you notice that mg and the normal force, um, if, we do the, if we do a quick sum of the forces in the y direction, we just get n minus mg is equal to zero since it's not accelerating in the y direction. And so we just get n is equal to mg. All right, so we can go ahead and plug that in, and we get that 1 half mv squared is equal to mu k times mg times d. Again, we're solving for d again. The masses cancel out. We get that d is equal to v squared divided by 2 mu k g. And um, uh, we get v squared is, uh, uh, what did we say our speed was? 18 meters per second? 18 meters per second squared divided by 2.5 and 9.8 meters squared. 
and that's just 18 squared and that's just going to give us d is 33.1 um, meters which I think is right uh, hopefully I've done that correct yeah um, have I done that correctly? I think so. Um, all right. Um, so hopefully I've done that right. Um, the physics should all be correct. If the numbers aren't. Okay. So now we can do part D. Okay. We're saying that it's at the bottom of the, this, the car is, at, is right at the bottom of the hill. Um, if we were trying to find how much force we need to pull the car up to the top of the hill in one minute. Okay. And I give you a hint that you have to find the, um, that you have to find the average velocity. So if we're trying to pull the car to the top of the hill in, in, um, in one minute. All right. Uh, let's look at what we're, what's happening. So, the car's at the bottom of the hill, it's not moving. I didn't say that you had to have it stop at the end, so, so what we're doing, what we're going to say is that, again, energy initial is equal to the final energy. Um, we have some, uh, we don't have any kinetic energy at the, oh, sorry, my pen is acting out. Um, we don't have any kinetic energy at the end because it's not moving. Um, we also will set um, h is equal to zero at the bottom so that we don't have any potential energy at the beginning. So all we're going to be doing is putting in work non-conserved. All right, in this case, the work non-conserved um, is, is this pulley that we're using. So we're using a pulley to pull it up. Um, and so, so we're providing some force over that distance, over this 30 meters di distance. Um, at the end, we're going to have some kinetic energy, because again, I didn't say that we stopped the car at the end. And we're also going to have some potential energy, which just has to do with the height. All right, where that height is that, um, you know, whatever that is, that, that um, whatever 30, 30 sign of 35 is. Um, so, which I think is like 17 or something. That's 17.2. So this, this height is 17.2 meters. Okay. Um, so uh, we have some force, which is a pulley, the force of the pulley, over some distance. And that's just equal to 1 half the mass times the velocity, where this velocity is the velocity final, right? Velocity final squared plus mgh final. Now again, we know what the final height is, and it's, it's at the top. What we don't know is the, the final velocity. What I've told you is that I want it to go up the hill in one minute, okay? Um, if it goes up the hill in one minute, we know it's going 30 meters, all right? So that's the distance that it travels. Um, and it's going in, in one minute, which is 60 seconds. Now, this isn't the V final, this is the average velocity. Average velocity is, um, is distance over, over time. Um, and so that's equal to 0 0.5. Okay, that's the average velocity. But we have this equation, if you remember, which is that the average velocity is equal to the V final. Oh. Apparently my pen is going to stop working. Uh, pre pause while I replace. Sorry about that. The um, the battery was going on my pen. Okay, here we go. V final um, plus V initial over two is the V average for constant acceleration. Um, our initial velocity is zero, so we get that the V final is just equal to two times the V average. Okay, or since the V average was just zero point five, the V final is one meter per second, because this was 0 0.5 meters per second. Okay, so one meter per second is the final velocity. So we get that the force of pulling times the distance, which is 30 meters, let's just divide that out. Um, well, we can put it, no, we'll keep it there for right now. 
one half the mass of the car times the V final, which is one meter per second, plus the mass of the car times G, and I'm running out of room here, plus mass of the car times G, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the height, which is 17 meters. All right. Um, we need to know the mass of the car. I think I told you that it was just a thousand kilogram car. So we get this force of pull is equal to one half times a thousand kilograms times one squared plus a thousand kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 17 meters all divided by 30 meters. Force of pulling is just Is 5,570 um, newtons. Okay, and for the last part, I asked you to design a draw a pulley system that allow you um, to pull the rope fast enough. Um, this is equivalent to pulling um, a, a 500 kilogram uh, mass, which is five times approximately um, any of our weights. Um, I'm going to assume that I can pull approximately, um, let's say, 50 kilograms, so about 100 pounds or 100, 130 pounds worth of mass. And so if I if I have if I want to pull the equivalent of 50 kilograms, that's 500 newtons. And so I need this uh, force decreased by a factor of 10. So the best way to do that is by a block and tackle pulley system. It's going to be really hard for me to draw, but we're going to have to have. One. Ah, yeah, let's do it this way. Um, one, two, three, three, four, five, six. Oops. Something like this, where these are all connected to the ceiling. And then these are all, uh, let's do it this way. Let's not make it have an angle. Here's the car. And I know we're pulling it up a slope, but this just gives you approximately the idea. So if we look at that, some sort of system like that, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 tensions pulling up. Um, and so you have, if you do a quick free body diagram, you get that 10, uh, and, this, and this is the tension of me. So that's, that's the tension, um, basically how, how hard I have to pull on it. So 10 tension is equal to mg, or is equal to the force, the force pull. Um, and then, uh, you know, so then the tension is equal to F pull divided by 10. That's just approximately the idea that I want you to get out of it. Okay, I hope that's all useful. Um, please let me know if you're um, having trouble getting the answer I did or if I made any mis mistakes. Uh, but that's the general idea with how we do these types of problems. Again, obviously a longer problem, um, but, um, but one that's useful and that it combines a lot of the things that we've been talking about. And I hope it's useful to you. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of the time uh, studying for this exam.